Hello and welcome to vlog number 5. I've been working on the samples for the new 1 to 48 scale Spitfire Mark 1A and BF 109E4 from the Battle of Britain. These are the first aircraft I've produced in over 7 months and I was worried that I had lost my touch. I'm really pleased with the result, but I'll leave you to decide on the final verdict. Both of these 1 to 48 scale fighters are limited editions of 25 only. The figures are optional. To find out more, click on the links in the description below. Now, on to the MB5. You may have seen the rendered images from the last vlog. I created these from a 3D computer model I designed, based on scale drawings and photographs of the MB5 prototype. The drawings were pretty accurate, but there is often a little artistic interpretation to get the character of the aircraft just right. At this stage, I try and add as much detail as possible, as it helps me get the overall look of the model correct. Unfortunately, much of this detail will be omitted when it comes to 3D printing, but working to this level of detail also allows me to get to know the subject thoroughly. With the 3D model complete, I now have a good idea how I can break it down for 3D printing and production. Here the different colours indicate the separate groups of parts which will be 3D printed. The wing and fuselage will obviously be separate, then it is a matter of selecting and grouping similar parts for printing. The parts are then exported into slicer software. I use Cura. This prepares the part for 3D printing. There are a lot of settings to adjust for the best results. I'm a little rusty on this as you will see later. Here the wing is being sliced. The blue areas are support structures onto which the wing is being built up. I print in ABS, which is a good material to rework by hand and withstands mould making well. It benefits from being printed in an enclosed environment, so I don't have any footage of the printing process. But I'm working on that for the future. It is a mesmerising process. In this mode you can see the path the printer makes, laying down the ABS. And these are the printed parts. Let's take a closer look and see what I have to work with. Firstly the fuselage. I designed my own supports here which worked well. The outer finish is good, but it needs a lot of filling and filing back. I had to make a compromise in the settings, which filled in a lot of the cockpit. That will have to be ground out. Onto the props and small parts. They aren't bad, lots to clean up, but a good result. Now for the wing. Here you can see the individual layers, like a contour map. The support structure is clearly visible, but it looks a bit overkill. That is going to be hard to clean up. This batch of small parts is a mess. I think I had the printer extruding too much ABS for too long and it built up badly. For the main undercarriage I added my own support and printed it with a finer nozzle. I'm pretty happy with the result. The tails were the first part I had printed in well over a year and were massively over extruded. Fortunately the excess ABS is easy to remove and I just need these to be blanks so that I can file them down to the correct profile. The radiator and chin came out the best. Overall I think I'll call that a success. 7 out of 10. Now, let's just see how much cleaning up there is on these parts. I'll start with the fuselage. Firstly I'll cut off the base plate where the part was attached to the printer bed.
main weapon of choice is my trusty ancient Dremel with a cutting disc. The ABS doesn't stand a chance. Once I've removed the support structure, I can get to the main part. It is a bit brutal, but this ABS is strong. Now you can see inside the fuselage and the unsupported loose ABS. This has to be ground back anyway. Don't worry, it'll look fine in the end. A sanding drum on the Dremel helps take the unwanted ABS supports back to the fuselage. Now, let's see how thick the infill is that I have to remove. How bad can it be?
Well, that's pretty thick. That could take a while. I've always found it better to have an excess of material and file it back than not to have enough material and try and build it back up. For this reason, I always print parts allowing for a degree of filing back. Next time you build a plastic model and complain about a little flash, ejector marks, or a joint needing filler, think of me. It could be worse. Really. Let's just see if the fuselage fits onto the wing. Wow! That's a relief! One of the advantages of 3D printing is that everything comes out straight and square. But as you can see, it still requires a delicate human touch. This cleaning up and fitting of all the parts will take me several days. So make sure you tune in to my next vlog for more progress on the Martin Baker MB5. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit subscribe. Leave a comment and check out some of the other videos in my channel.